So we learned how to handle errors in Express and Node.js. Now in this lecture, we will learn how to find errors and fix them by debugging the Node.js code. Because if you think practically, there will always be some bugs in our code, no matter how careful we are while implementing a functionality. So it's good to have a tool to help us debug our code and find bugs and fix it. Now, this is not about error handling with Express, but it is more about finding the bugs in the application. Now, there are different ways of debugging Node.js code. For example, we can use a tool called NDB for debugging Node.js. But in this course, we are going to use VS Code to debug Node.js. The Visual Studio Code Editor has a built-in debugging support for Node.js runtime, and it can debug JavaScript, TypeScript, and many other languages that are transpiled to JavaScript. So I'm going to show you how you can use VS Code built-in debugger to debug your Node.js code. In order to use VS Code to debug your Node.js code, you can go to this option, which is Run and Debug. You click on that. And the first thing which we need to do here is we need to create a launch JSON file. The launch JSON file is a configuration file in your Node.js project that basically tells VS Code how to configure debugger for your Node.js project. So click on this option. And here, first we need to select the environment which we want to debug. So in our case, we want to debug Node.js codes. So the environment will be Node.js. And based on that, this launch.json file has been created where we have one configuration. The type of the configuration is Node. Request is launch, name of the configuration is launch program, and here we also have the skip files property where we can specify the files which we don't want to debug. Okay, so this is just a default configuration. Now, what we want is we want to create a new configuration. Currently, if you see the configuration name is launch program, and that's what you will see here in the drop down. But here we want to create a new configuration. For that, we can click on this add configuration button. And from here, we need to select a template. Now, the template which I'm going to select here is attached to process. Okay. And based on that, another configuration has been created here. Here you can see the request is of type attach. Then here we have a process ID, which is calling a process on the command. And the name of this configuration is attached by process ID. So what this will do is it will allow us to take our Node.js debugger and enumerate Node.js processes and allow us to pick the node process that we want to connect to and debug. And I will show you that in a second. So let's save the changes here. Let's save this file. And now when we click on this drop down, you can see that configuration attached by process ID. If we select that, we should be able to debug our Node.js code. Okay, so for that, what I will do is first I will open this file explorer from here. And let's go to controllers folder and you can see this launch.json file. This has been created inside this .vs code folder. Okay. Now let's go to our movies controller.js and let me scroll up and let's put a breakpoint here. Okay. Now let's go back to run and debug. And now we need to run this application in debug mode. For that, we can click on this play button. So when I click on this play button, it will show us some processes which we can select from. Okay, so here you can see we have three node processes which we can select from. I'm going to select this node space server.js. So basically this is how we are running our node application. The other processes are like you can also run your server.js file using nodemon or you can simply run this command run start. Right, so these are the three ways in which we can run our node application. So the one which I am going to select here is node space server.js. Let me select that. So debugger has been attached. Now this function will be called when we make a get request to this get all movies API. And to make a request to this get all movies API, we need to specify a URL which matches the route pattern for this route handler. So if I go to Postman and from there, if I make a request to this URL, so root URL slash API slash V1 slash movies here, we are making a get request to this URL. And when we are making a get request to this URL, this function is going to be executed. Okay. But since we have put a breakpoint here, when I go ahead and make a request at this line, the execution of this function will stop. Let me actually show you that. So here, let me make a request. And if I go back to VS code, 
you will see that at this line the breakpoint has hit and the execution of this function has stopped at this line now inside this get all movies we have this request response and next function as local variables and this features is also a local variable right so in the left hand side you can see here we have this variables and in there if i expand this local variables you see we have features which is a local variable here because we are defining it inside this get all movies function so currently it is undefined that's because currently this line is still executing the execution of this line has not completed once the execution of this line will complete then only the value which this expression will return that will be assigned to this features variable initially it is undefined then we also have this movies local variable and since we are creating it at this line and this line has not been executed yet that's why this movies is also undefined so this is also a local variable here then this request next and response these are the local variables because we are creating it as the parameter and then this variable here is also a local variable in this case this variable here is pointing to global object all right and here at the top you will see some options so for example the first option is continue and shortcut for that is f5 when you select this option what it will do is it will continue the execution and it will hit the next breakpoint if you have any in your code if you don't have any other breakpoint then when you click on this continue button it will simply execute all the application code and it will return you the result then we have next option which is step over and the shortcut for that is f10 it allows you to execute your code line by line so here from this line if i press this step over the execution control will reach to the next line so this line has been executed if i hover over this feature you see it has returned us an api feature object where we have the query property and the query string property currently the query string property is empty object because when we made the request we did not specified any query string so that's why it is empty object and here we have the query object the query object is basically the query object returned by this movie.find okay and you can see that now this features has been assigned with an instance of api feature class if i expand this here we have the query property and the query string property so as i mentioned this query string is an empty object then here we have the query object which you can have a look on so these are the properties and methods on that query object all right and now if i again step over the execution control will reach to the next line so let me do that and now the movie has been assigned with some value so now you can see this movies has some value okay and here we also have this watch where you can specify what you want to have a watch for for example here i can specify uh, let's say movies variable okay this movies variable if i press enter it will give us the value which is currently stored inside that movies variable in the same way you can click on this plus button and you can specify the expression for which you want to keep a watch all right then the next option is the step in option step into basically it allows you to go inside a code or inside a function okay but here i will simply step over and the execution of this function is complete so again if i step over the response will be sent back to the postman if i go back to postman here you can see we have all the movie objects in the response okay so in this way we have debugged our get all movies api this function now let me move this breakpoint from here and what we will do is we'll open our api features class so it is in utils folder if i go to this api features here we have some functions some utility functions like filter sort limit fields paginate etc so what i will do is i will put a breakpoint inside this filter function and i will also put it inside this sort function and let's say inside this limit function and now let's go back to postman and let's again make a request but this time we are going to specify some query strings for example i want to filter the movie objects based on the rating so here let's say ratings greater than or equal to maybe seven and sort by 
price okay let's go ahead and let's make a request and again we have already put the breakpoint so when i make a request here if i go to vs code you see first we are filtering the data so here the breakpoint has hit this filter function let me step over so let's see the query string value here so you see here for the query string we have an object where we are specifying the ratings greater than or equal to seven and we are also specifying sort sort by price so this is what the query string looks like okay let's step over again and now what we are doing is in this query string we are trying to replace this gte gt lte or lt if we have any with dollar appended in front of it so in our query string we have one gte so now you can see for this query string that gte has been prefixed with a dollar now and now from that query string we are trying to create a query object at this line so again if i step over this is how our query object looks like so in the query object we have two properties ratings and sort sort by price if i expand this ratings there we have this dollar gte 7 so that means we want to filter all those movie objects where ratings is greater than or equal to 7 okay and then we are using this query dot find and to that we are passing this query object okay so based on this query object this expression is going to return some result and we are assigning that result back to this dot query so again if i step over so this is how our query object will look like so this dot query is this object okay and now finally we are returning this from here so if i again step over we have returned this now on the result of this filter function we are calling sort function so now the control will reach to this sort function so from here i can step into the sort function or even if i step over since we have put a breakpoint inside this sort function it will hit that breakpoint but i also want to show you that using this step in we can go inside this sort function so when i step into here or if i press f11 on the keyboard we will go inside the sort function now in the sort function we are checking first we are checking if this query string has a sort property or not so as you can see this query string has a sort property okay so it will go inside this if statement so if i step over again it has went inside this if statement then here from the query string we are trying to find out the sort by field so if i hover over this query string we want to sort by price okay so we want to get that field name for that we have written the logic here if i step over again you see sort by is price okay so based on that now we are going to sort the result so here sort by is price so we are going to sort the result by price if i step over again so this logic has been executed and again from this sort function we are returning this okay and now i can simply go ahead and i can continue from here because we don't have any more breakpoints so when i click on this continue button the complete application code will be executed okay we also have a breakpoint here on this limit fields function but i'm not going to execute this function here so i will simply continue now and the complete application code will be executed and if i go back to postman there we should have only those movies in the result where the ratings is greater than or equal to seven and they should be sorted by price okay so now you can see we have eight movie objects in the result and they're all sorted by price finally let's go back to vs code again and now let's introduce a bug in our code so what i will do is in this limits field function what we are trying to do is we are getting the query string so for the limit fields we will get some fields and then we are trying to join those limit fields using a space now let's say while implementing this functionality i forgot to include a space i specified the single quotes but in there i did not specified a space so what this will do is it will join the limit fields the projection fields without any space and because of that the application will not work properly so let me save the changes here okay and let's go back to postman and here let's specify some query string for limiting the fields so let's specify this field query string and let's say in the result we only want to have the name of the movie the duration of the movie and maybe also the price 
Okay. And if I make a request here, you see, we are getting some unwanted result. We don't see name, duration or price field in the result. We are only seeing this underscore ID, this duration in hours, which is currently null and this ID field. We are not seeing this name, duration and price field. Why is that? Let's check that. Let's try to debug the code and find out what is the reason we are getting this kind of result. So let's go to VS code again. And we already have a breakpoint on this limit fields. We know that the problem is somewhere in this limit fields function only because when we are specifying this fields query string here, we are basically telling that we want to limit the fields in the result to name, duration and price. And for that, we have written the logic inside this limit fields function. So let me go ahead and let me remove these breakpoints from here. Okay, let's start the debug mode. For that, let's click on this play button or this run button. Again, we need to select the process. I'm going to select this node space server JS process. So debugger has been attached. Let's go ahead and let's make a request. And the breakpoint has hit here. So in the query string, we have name, duration and price. Let's step over. Okay. And now what we are trying to do is from the query string, we want to get all the fields which we have specified for the fields query string and we want to join them. Okay. And then based on that, we are going to limit the fields in the result. But if I step over again, you see the fields value is name, duration and let me show it here. So it is name, duration, price. There is no space in between them. And we don't have any data with this field in our database. Right. Since we do not have any space in between these field names, that's why we had the problem. The result was not what we expected. So in this way, we can find out what is the problem and we can fix it in our code. So from here, if you see to this query dot select, we are passing this value to this select function. Okay. And we don't have any column, any field with this name in our database. And that's why we have an unexpected result. But now we know that from here, because we have not specified any space here, because of that only we are getting the unexpected results. So now we can go ahead and we can fix that by including a space. We can save the changes before that. Let me continue from here and let me go ahead and let me save the changes. I'm not going to run it in debug mode again, but now if I go back and if I make a request, now we should have the proper result. Okay, so now you can see we also have name, duration and price in the result. So this is how we can debug our Node.js code and find out the bugs, the issues and we can fix it. Now, debugging Node.js code is a vast topic in itself and it's not possible for me to cover everything related to debugging Node.js code in this course. But there are a lot of articles available online which you can go through and you can learn more about that. So this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.